So let's talk about dildos. That was very interesting. You said that people made their own dildos. Was that, do you think that was the outlet to make objects of for personal preference or was it because it's a personal object you don't want you don't want other people to see it no i believe um and like i said you know so much of this has been lost so we're we're kind of trying to go back and research um from other literature that followed on from the kam sutra to get explanations but um so Making dildos for the woman was not an unusual thing. In ancient China, it was a bridal gift. So when a girl got married, she was given a replica of her husband's penis <laughs> uh, in a beautifully decorated lacquer box. And often they would put his photo at the bottom or his signature at the bottom so that if he was away for a long period of time on work, um, she didn't have to deprive herself of the pleasure. The Kama Sutra says that it was extremely important that uh, the woman was given an instrument of pleasure, but it was about her pleasure because we say that every vagina is different. And so it was up to the man to learn how to make something that would suit her pleasure, not just to give her a replica of his own one. And it was interesting because that was one way of introducing variety to their lovemaking because, you know, you, um, you had different types of... Um, uh, instruments that you could use. I mean, part of it, of course, becomes like the courtesan saying, well, if you make me one in gold, it would make me so happy because it would remind me totally of you because you're like my golden boy. But, you know, that was a little bit of give me some gold. Um, so, yeah, there's a little bit of both. You know, let's be honest. This is real life. It's not um, a utopian idealistic world. But, yeah, the idea of making the dildos was to introduce variety into a relationship and often they were used together by couples. So it wasn't just that the woman had to go off into a little hidey hole, use it by herself. It was for both of them to use together as mutual pleasure. And sometimes also to take the pressure off the man because you know you can't always expect the man to perform at the same um, rate or the same level every single day. There were also slightly different things that they could use. And I found that really interesting. So one of the things that it talks about is how they would wrap a string of pearls around their penis. Like and a cock ring. <laughs> yeah, like a cock ring, but it would be sort of like, you know, a little bit more. So that would not only change the size, but also the, the feeling of it, the texture of it when it went in and out. And um, yeah, I, I just thought that was such a fabulous idea but i have to say each time i say this lots of lube ladies and gentlemen oh yeah lots of lube uh, very important uh, the other one uh, was that i think was really fabulous when it comes to different instruments for sex is the um the the silver balls you know the little pleasure balls that they used now here what they would do is you'd have two little tiny silver balls on a little string or a ribbon one of them would have a drop of mercury in it okay sealed into it and the other one was empty so when you put it inside and you walked around doing your housework it, the mercury would heat up and it would start to vibrate so it would give you that little bit of pleasure as you walked around doing your housework but what i love is the idea of the second ball it just tinkled very gently so it gave you a beautiful sound so the idea of pleasure really was about beauty it wasn't about, oh, yeah, I really feel like I need to knock one up for myself, you know, I need to get one orgasm out or whatever. It was just, just imagine, I mean, actually thinking that far that the second ball would just give you a beautiful little sound and that would pleasure you, uh, your other senses. It must have been good for the pelvic floor as well to do that. Yeah, I guess it's much like the Kegel balls in a way. Mm. Um, and I, I just think that that, would, so actually it's really interesting because that became so popular as an idea that the, um, the British East India Company started to bring back a lot of those when they were in India. And then a black market started in it because the locals in India realized that the British wanted it. So they started to replace the mercury with other liquid. And because mercury was more expensive and difficult to come by. And then there was a law laid against um, selling fake goods with replacement mercury and um, so on so that I mean yeah there was like a whole life that existed around these pleasure balls 